Today on Blogosphere, we have Paul Dennett, podcaster from Australia, and Shyamadas Gupta, senior editor from Wisden India. The question, guys, is should cricket matches be played at newer or neutral venues, that is, countries other than those who play cricket? Paul, your views on this first, please. Well, it's often said that cricket is the world's second most popular sport. In actual fact, it's probably basketball. One of the reasons for this is that for the last 30 years, the NBA has really focused on expanding into China. And they began by playing lots of exhibition games and realizing they were there for the long haul and not focusing on short-term profits. Cricket should learn from this. And the appetite's there. Uh, with Warren and Tendulkar a couple of years ago when they had that T20 series in America, it was quite successful. And that was uh, with retired players playing for exhibition teams. So pick a country, preferably one with lots of Indian expats, and play a proper, genuine T20 international series. Maybe India versus Pakistan. Market it well, make, it the, make the tickets cheap, and people will come. And it'll be a good start because cricket really does need to expand faster than it currently is. Absolutely, Paul. I think you'll find Indian cricket fans anywhere in the world, and that's a great idea. But Shamil, let me come to you. What do you think? Well, it's a noble thought, all right, but uh, I, I wonder if the if One Day International Cricket or Champions Trophy or these tournaments are ready to do that yet, because don't forget that One Day International Cricket is also searching for context in a in a big way. And to do that, I think uh, you know you need big stadiums and big crowds and so on. Now, I'm I'm not for once saying that. Uh, a Germany or a Croatia or a China or a USA or wherever, there won't be big crowds. I'm not saying that. But it, it, the risk has to be worth it. Um, at the same time, I don't think the ICC or, test, or, or the Test playing nations have really run enough for even Afghanistan or Ireland, leave alone Scotland or Netherlands or Nepal. And then you come to these other nations that you're mentioning. So uh, it, it's a noble thought and I'd love to see it happen. I'd love to see top flight cricket go all around the world. Uh, and create a fan base and, and create an audience. But uh, I, I wonder if we are ready for it at the moment. And this discussion is really getting interesting. Paul, I'd like to come back to you. What do you think of Shamir's views? Do you also think that the minnows should be targeted like the ones uh, mentioned by Shamir? Well, Shamir is correct. We really should be focusing on the countries where cricket already has a strong presence. But we can also look to expand at the same time. And progress can happen a lot faster than you think. I, I remember um, Sri Lanka being absolutely thrashed by Australia in 1985. Australia got 323 in a one-day game, bowled Sri Lanka out for 91. Who would have thought that 11 years later, Sri Lanka would win the World Cup? So if we did focus on, say, Malaysia with its 3 million expat, expat Indians, who's to say that in 20 years they wouldn't be ready for an IPL franchise? Or if we focused on America with its 4.5 million expat Indians, Who's to say that at some time in the not-too-distant future, they might not be able to get their own T20 competition up and running? Now, ICC has said that their ambition is to be the world's number one sport. Not sure that FIFA are quaking in their boots too much, but if that is the stated ambition, then we have to think big. Absolutely, and there have been measures taken. There are experiments being made by even the BCCI by holding that tournament in America, giving a lot of exposure to the sport. But I think we have a lot more interesting point of views coming in uh, on the very topic. But thank you for joining us, gentlemen, on Emirates Match Point, and we hope to see you soon again.